Nazaria. Nazaria. Bus. Nazaria. That's it. Hey. Nazaria. Okay. Yalla. Yalla. Good morning, guys, from Baghdad, Iraq. Now we're leaving the city of Baghdad and heading south to a place called Nazaria. It requires a five-hour drive in a local bus. So me and Katerina are about to find out what it looks like. Yalla. Okay? We're following this man. But yeah, oh, careful here, careful. Oh my god. We have no idea how much it costs to get to Nazaria. We've just trusted this random man on the street who's screaming out Nazaria on the side of the road. And he's gonna take us there. So let's find out what it looks like and how much it is. Now the place we're going in Nazaria is basically these marshlands. Last time I was in Iraq, I actually bumped into a fellow tourist. He was from Belgium. And he told me he spent a whole night sleeping with some locals in the marshlands of Iraq. And he's given me a contact who I'm gonna meet later. He's gonna take me around and basically we're gonna sleep in his home for the night on the marshlands of Iraq. So it should be quite exciting. Strong smell of urine down here underneath the bridge. Not the cleanest of places as well, look at that. My God. Anyway, let's follow this man to the bus. Blimey, look at this. What a start to the morning. Seven o'clock in the morning here in Baghdad. I've got a feeling this isn't going to be a bus. It appears it's just a car. It's not, uh, it's not bus. Bus? How much is this? How much? Uh, 100. 100,000? What's 100,000? 60 quid? There's no bus? Bus, no. And I'm not Hey. Okay, yalla. Okay, shukran. Well, me Arabic, very shui shui. No Arabic. Assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum salam, habibi, and yalla. Shukran. Well, there you go. I thought I was going to be getting into a local bus. Our hotel organised us a taxi to get to a bus station. But as you see, we got swarms. People shout Nazaria. I said the first one. I took the first one, and he's led us to a, basically a private car. It's fine. It's more comfortable, and it's probably only 10, 15 pound more than what you would pay in a bus. So yeah, next stop, Nazaria. Five hours in this taxi. He's offering his phone number in case anything happens, anything bad happens where we're going, we can call him and he will help us. Oh. Just being friendly. Yeah. Oh. First pit stop after an hour on the road. Get a cup of tea or something, go toilet. Oh, the murder a cup of tea right now, gagging. <laughs> Safe to say you don't get many foreigners passing through here. So we get a few stairs, especially Katerina. Not many females in here, if any. In fact, no, no, no females. Just, just guys. So yeah, let's have a cup of tea and get back on the road. <laughs> wow, pit stop over already. That was a matter of a minute and a half. Sat down, necked a cup of tea, scalding hot, burnt my tongue. Back into the taxi. We got about an hour and a half, two hours until we get to Nazaria. Not much for me to show you on this road trip. Just miles and miles of empty highway. Just a few cars on the road in the middle of nowhere. We're now going through all the deserts in this very remote area of Iraq. After 
five hours on the Iraqi highway, we have arrived in the town of Nazaria. But it's not over yet. We need to get another form of transport to the next place called Chiabayash or something like that. And that's where the marshlands are. So let's find out how we get there. Chiabash? Chiabash? Chibayish. Chibayish. Okay. Do the Chibayish. Or in the Mentos, no, the Chibayish, they're not going to sell it. It's not going to sell it. Wow, that sounds aggressive. What do you say? I will create a garage for myself and take you to Shabayash car and take the driver's number of the mode and I will verify you that you have reached Shabayash and you will want to call me when... Okay, okay. Sh shukran, shukran. I don't really understand. <laughs> Read that. So he's taking us to another garage, I think, and then we're going to get into another taxi. I have no idea. Okay. No, 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 no. Two. 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 Ahmed, I just go to toilets. Toilet. Toilet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, if only you could smell that toilet. My God. Anyway, it's time to continue the journey. We have no idea what's happening. I think they're swapping drivers or something. I'm not too sure. Any idea what's happening? Oh, Our bags have been swapped places? Yeah. Okay. Yalla. 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 Yalla! Ahmed, shukran so shukran. much. Habibi. Okay, thank Habibi. you so much. Habibi. 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 We'll stay in touch. I WhatsApp you, okay? I WhatsApp? Shukran. Shukran, okay. Alright, here we go. We have swapped taxis. We are now heading to the marshlands, which is another hour down the road. Bayesh, we've arrived and I can see the man that we're meeting. All I've seen is his photo on their Instagram page. Here he is. Yeah? Hey brother! How are you? How are you? Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you, brother. Nice to meet you. Okay, yalla. Well, we're going to be spending the night here on the marshlands with a local family. That's all I know, honestly. I don't have much detail. I don't know where we sleep. Apparently in some hut. I don't know. Where am I going to crap? Shukran, brother. Thank you so much. Okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, this way? This is the house of Abu Haida. Down there? Some rice and soup. Rice and soup? Yeah. Okay. And the uh, fish and the, and the dinner and the marshes. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Sounds good. Wow, look at this. Beautiful place. Salam alaikum. Salam. How are you? Right, we just had a cup of tea and some food with the family members here. We're now going to head to the marshes. We've got to get a boat there apparently, and that's where we're going to be sleeping. You ready, mate? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Let's head to the marshes. Hello, brother. What is your name? I'm um, name's Amir. What's your name? Russian. Russian? What's your name? Amir. Amir. Benjamin. What's Benjamin? Yeah, nice to meet wow. you, brother. What are you reading? English. English? Yes. In, uh, in oh. Yes, in English. Nice, mate. Ah, so you speak good English. Mm. There we go. Yes. Ah. Hello. And what is your name? What's your name? My name is Abdullah. Abdullah? Wow. And your name? Ali. <laughs> is it, huh? Ali. Ali. Nice to meet you guys. Where are you from? England. Oh, wow. In, in Portugal. Oh, I love England. You love England? You love English? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey bro, how are you? Hey, hey. Good man. Thank you. Good Keep man. English is a big Shui shui? That's okay. Good luck. The Keep boy. working hard, okay? The boy. The boy, yes, boy. the boy. Okay guys. <laughs> Shukran. Bye. Shukran. Bye. Thank you. He blew a kiss to you. I know. Just waiting for the boat to come pick us up and take us to the marshes. We're going to say goodbye to Ahmed in a second. He's the one that's organised this for us. And yeah, 
he's got a friend that apparently lives and sleeps out there on the marshes. No idea what to expect, where we're going to be sleeping. I don't have a clue what's going to happen. But either way, that's going to be our home for the evening. So yeah, this is it. This is the south of Iraq. We're in the middle of nowhere pretty much. About 20 miles that way, you've got Iran. And then about 20 miles that way, you've got Kuwait. So yeah, pretty interesting place. So yeah, we're going to wait for our boat and head to our home for the evening. All right, this is it. This is the boat. Let's hop on. <laughs> oh. Oh. Jesus. Wetter. Sit down, cat. Yeah, take a seat. Yalla Habibi! Come on! <laughs> Guys, my camera's not waterproof. I'm gonna put it away. It's getting soaked. I'll see you when I get to the place I'm staying. Well, we've arrived at the place we're gonna be spending the night. Absolutely soaked to the bone, freezing, shaking like a shitting dog. It's so cold here. But this is it. So hopefully my camera picks it up. There's Katarina. Welcome to <laughs> Welcome to the middle of nowhere. Look at this. In the middle of nowhere in Iraq. Just had a fire on to warm up. I'm soaked to the bone, freezing. But yeah, look at this. No! Jesus Christ! Yeah, they do bite. <laughs> Cat, come here. Guys, I can't actually film the hut right now because there's two females in there behind me. I think they're leaving soon and then me and Kat can go in there so I can film it then. But yeah, that hut behind me is apparently where me and Kat are going to be sleeping tonight. No idea what it looks like, we'll find out soon. So yeah, in the meantime, Kat, I guess it's just me and you for now. I can't see you. There we go. I guess we just sit and chill here next to this fire. Very romantic to me. Very romantic. Yeah. Beautiful scenery. <laughs> so Ahmed has now left. He's gone back to his house in the town. And he just left me and Kat here with two locals. Or three or four, I don't know. There might be a few in that hut behind me. <coughs> and yeah, this is it. This is it. I don't know what happens next. Do we just sit here for the next eight hours, nine hours? I think we will have dinner somehow. We do have dinner. He said we get fish dinner at some point. Right. This guy's going to lead us to the room. I think we're good to go in. Ah, okay. Oh, it's a bit warmer in here to be fair. This is it. This is where we're sleeping tonight. <laughs> well, you guys probably can't see me, but it's 7pm here at the marshes. It's time to cook our dinner. Mazgouf. The famous Iraqi dish which you've seen in the last video. My friend here is going to prepare it. He's got the fire on. And it's time to dig in. I wish you could feel how cold it is here in the marshes. Inside is actually really good. It keeps it all insulated. It's really warm. But as soon as you step out here, it is freezing. <gasps> here it is, the Mazgouf. It's going in. Look at that. It's two. No, that's one, isn't it? It's just split open. Is it one? That's one fish, yeah. They cut it in half. And then they cook it like this on the edge of the fire. They don't shove it on top of the fire. They cook it on the edge. Cat, we've been on some pretty wild adventures, very random. But I think what's happening right now is number one. If I make it oh. tomorrow, I'm grateful for life. <laughs> That's the spirit. I'm the same. <laughs> Alright, we're going to wait in here whilst we prepare our fish. Back to our bedroom. There we go. Oh man. 
Not too sure what the layout's going to be tonight, like where we actually <coughs> sleep, if they give us blankets, pillows, but I think yeah. they will. We'll find out later, I guess. <laughs> وحق اللي على راسك تراها من اموتا بالقبر عيني تراها شفت شجرة العود بيار ورق اخضر وان شو كران well guys we just had dinner a lovely portion of masgoof and then we were joined by an elderly man he was singing some songs for us, some love songs apparently. He came over on his boat and joined us for dinner. And he's actually very famous in this area, in the marshes. Hopefully I can catch him in the morning and show you. But yeah, he's very well known, very well respected in the area. So yeah, that was cool for him to come and sing some songs. But me and Kat are now alone in our room, nice and cosy. I'm gonna call it a night. Hopefully <coughs> we, get some, we get some sleep, but I doubt it. Anyway, catch you guys in the morning. See you in a bit. Wish us luck. Yeah. Good morning from the marshes. Ah, and good morning from cats. How'd you sleep? Me too. <laughs> yeah, as you can imagine, we haven't slept. But now it's daylight, I can give you a proper tour of the camp. I'll show you the room in a minute. But this is it. This is where we were chilling last night, having a cup of tea. There's those bloody goose down there. There's the fire where we cooked the mazgu fish last night. This is the boat where we came in on. And there's the marshes for miles and miles. Yeah, it was impossible to sleep. All sorts of noises going on, all sorts. Goose, cows, chickens, you name it, it was going on. And uh, it was freezing last night, absolutely freezing. So the guys came in in the end. They were sleeping outside out here and they eventually came in at like one o'clock in the morning and joined us because it was freezing pissing it down all night so yeah they came in and after that i've probably got like an hour's sleep the cat's probably about like an hour's sleep that's it it's now six o'clock in the morning here in the marshes we survived let's get a cup of tea <laughs> I hate that fucking thing. Here's the culprits that kept us up all night. And then our room, Cat did a grand tour, lead the way. Here's like the kitchen behind, and Cat. It's a bit too dark in here still. Hopefully my camera picks it up a bit more. The cat slept at the end, they put some blankets out, a pillow, and then I slept in the middle, and eventually the two guys came in and joined us and joined us on the left. And that's it. That is where we slept last night. <laughs> Piss off. <laughs> right, we have had our cup of tea and we are ready to start the day. And now I can explain to you why me and Katerina slept in that straw hut behind us. Because you're probably thinking, why did you do that? Well, basically, they call this place the Cradle of Civilization. 
So here in the Iraqi marshlands, for generations, for 10,000 years, maybe more, people have been living like this, exact same layout for generations. So me and Kat have come here to experience it for ourselves. And boy, did we experience it. That was some night. We're now gonna get on the boat and head out of here. We're gonna head south to Basra, two hours down. And yeah, for a much needed shower, as you can imagine. So yalla, let's get out of here. So here he is, the famous man of the Iraqi marshlands. Very well known, very well respected here. Okay. Oh, he wants a selfie with us? With Come you. on in, brother. Come on in. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Af one. So an important fact about the marshlands is that during the Saddam Hussein era, thousands of people used to live here. Thousands. And then Saddam started to bomb the area. So many left, over 90% of the population left. They went to Iran and other parts of Iraq. And then the man behind me is one of the last remaining people here in the marshlands. Only like 7% stayed and over 90% left. So yeah, he's one of the last remaining people here in the Iraqi marshlands. Pretty crazy. Look at that! <laughs> oh man! Look at that! So guys, it started to absolutely lash it down back on the boat. We're soaked to the bone, but we're back where it all started in this ancient straw hut. With the main man, Shukran, brother. Shukran. Okay. Shukran. Some experience. Habibi. That. Habibi. Shukran. Habibi. Habibi. Shukran. Habibi. Shukran. Shukran. There we go. Some experience. Shukran. Habibi. Here in Iraq. Kat, let's get to Basra. Yeah.